Hi, this is Micah with Students for Sensible Drug Policy, and I have some great news to share with you today. This week in the halls of Congress, we had a huge victory in our campaign to get rid of the law that takes away financial aid from students with drug convictions. Now, ever since this law was passed in 1998, we've been fighting it. But since then, more than 200,000 students have lost their aid because of the provision. Thankfully, this year, we've been able to convince Congress to scale that law back so it would no longer apply to students convicted simply of possessing drugs. It would only apply to those convicted of distributing drugs. Now, of course, we think that the entire law should be repealed because it doesn't make sense to deny an education to somebody who's already faced criminal charges for their actions. But this is a huge compromise that would reinstate financial aid to thousands of students, so we were happy with it. Now, just a few nights ago, we found out that the law's original author, Mark Souter, wasn't as happy with that compromise as we were, and he was going to launch a last-minute campaign to reinstate the possession part of the bill. Now, we weren't about to let that happen, so we launched a campaign of our own. And over the past two days, we generated tens of thousands of phone calls to Congress, and I'm happy to say that we won. On Thursday, Congressman Souter approached the House and said that he was withdrawing his amendment. Take a look. Why should the taxpayers fund you if you're going to be basically drug addled while you're at school? So my amendment today would have reinstated possession as a grounds for losing a student loan. Congressman uh, Perlmutter from Colorado uh, came to me and said he had a suggested compromise, which basically says that uh, a conviction of a felony offense of narcotics uh, also grounds for losing your student loan. So I was probably going to lose today. This is a practical way. I didn't want to see possession go out of the bill. So what does this mean exactly? Well, it means that the new version of the law will most likely apply to felony drug convictions, which doesn't just cover distribution, but there are some possession convictions that are considered felonies as well. However, many people end up pleading down felony convictions into misdemeanor possession convictions, so this is still going to help thousands and thousands of students get back into school, especially if they just have a minor charge like a marijuana possession conviction. But what this also means is that our campaign was successful in getting Congressman Souter to back down, withdraw his amendment, and compromise, which is remarkable because just a few days ago, we were hearing that this was going to be a close vote and that there was a good chance that his, his amendment was going to pass. So how did this happen? Well, there were three main aspects to the campaign that I'd like to tell you about. So one major aspect of this campaign was building a diverse coalition of organizations fighting for reform. We had a letter circulating around Congress that was signed by more than 200 organizations, from addiction and treatment recovery organizations, to education organizations, to civil rights organizations, to drug policy organizations like SSDP, and also religious organizations were on that letter as well. The second aspect of our campaign was our direct lobbying efforts on Capitol Hill, which wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for a few members of Congress that really came through strong for us. Those members are Representatives Miller, Perlmutter, Frank, Davis, and Scott, who worked with us all week long on ensuring that their peers stood strong with us on this issue. And finally, there were our grassroots and netroots campaigns, which got kicked off on Wednesday morning when SSDP's outreach directors called all of our hundreds of chapters and told them, drop what you're doing, call Congress, and get your friends to do the same. Well, that's exactly what happened. And in just a few hours, the message had gone viral on Facebook, and we were getting tens of thousands of visitors to our website. Check out this email that I got from Bill Piper from the Drug Policy Alliance. Micah, SSDP is awesome. I couldn't go anywhere on Facebook without seeing something that linked back to the SSDP action page. A powerful grassroots campaign that I know made a huge difference. Bill. So as you can see, it was those three aspects of the campaign that came together within the past two days to make this happen. And it couldn't have happened without you. Whether you're a chapter member that helped us to spread the word, or if you took action and called Congress, or if you've made a donation over the past year to ensure that we have the staff to organize a campaign like this, I can't thank you enough. It's because of you that thousands of students are going to have an opportunity to go back to school this year. And while we should revel in our victory today, this fight isn't over yet. Even though the bill passed the House, 
The Senate version of the bill still needs to be passed, and then the differences between those two bills need to be worked out in a place called conference committee. And that's essentially where this issue is going to be determined. So we're going to ask you to take action again. But in the meantime, you can help us gear up for this fight by making a donation today. Just go over to ssdp.org slash donate and make an investment in our work. Whether it's $10 or $100 or $1,000, anything will help. So thank you so much for supporting the student movement working to end the war on drugs. With your help, we're making drug laws just a little more sensible. Thanks. Thanks.